Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Township of Springfield, County of Union, State of New Jersey meeting for November 23rd, 2021. Notice this meeting is being held in accordance with the public laws of 1975. Chapter 231, an adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. David Penn is not here tonight, so um, we'll be led by our fire chief, Carlo Palumbo, in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> oh, the pressure's on. <laughs> you have to say it now. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America, America to the, the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Oh, I'll take the land, that one. Excellent job, chief. Now, if we could have, please, a moment of silence for our service members overseas and at homes. All right, thank you. Roll call. Mayor Weber. Here. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Present. Committeeman Capitis. Here. Committeewoman Du Bois. Here. Committeeman Huber. Present. All right, if you're watching this, um, we are going to go into an executive session right now, uh, which should not be very long. We're going to take a recess. You're going to see a uh, generic screen notification up on the screen that just says Township of Springfield Township Committee meeting, and we will be resuming shortly. Resolution 112321, whereas Article 6 of the Open Public Meetings Act provides that a public body may hold a closed session, and whereas the Township Committee will, during this meeting, enter into discussion of the following matters. Personnel and attorney-client privilege, fire department, personnel and attorney-client privilege, compensation, whereas the matters to be discussed in closed session are to remain in the strictest of confidence by all township committee members in furtherance of their fiduciary duties to the township. Now, therefore, be it resolved, matters discussed at this meeting will be released to the public when the reasons for discussing and acting upon them in closed session no longer exist. I make a motion to go in closed. Thank you. I got it. Oh, no. <laughs> Get ready for something. I got it. There's a bunch of differences at the tree line. A bunch of performances. I'm so stoked. And I finally see twice heard play because I keep missing every time they play.
John, I'm going to run through the proclamations and announcements real quick, get that done with, of course. and then we'll go to Mike. We'll yes, sir. Your presentation. Okay. Ready? All right, we're back. We're going to do proclamation. We're back live? Okay. We're going to do proclamations and announcements. First, we have the Hanukkah Festival of Lights, Sunday, November 28th, 5 p.m. at Veterans Park. Then we have the tree lighting and musical tribute to the season, Wednesday, December 1st, from 6 to 8. Rain snow date is going to be Thursday, December 2nd. Live performances by Tay McQueen, Twice Heard, Dayton Jazz Ensemble, and Front and Center Performing Arts. Photos with Santa. Appearances by, Tolls, by Toy Soldier and The Grinch and much more. Um, we have already covered that. Uh, that's actually all the proclamations and announcements we have. All right, that's a, we got a short thing right there. Um, where do you want to go now, Mr. Basicolo? Do you want to You want to do public hearing first and then we'll go to yeah. do okay. that first. We'll do the public hearing of the CDBG grant. Can I go With on? Brendan O'Reilly yeah. and John Basicolo. Need a motion to open hearing? Oh, I'll make a motion to open the hearing. Sorry about that, Brendan. A second. Okay. I sat, I was Uber. beat to my second. <laughs> oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sorry. Get it together, Target. man. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. My name is Brendan O'Reilly and I am here to present the Community Development Block Grant application which we use for our senior services or senior transportation services. In the past few years, the county has awarded us a little under $10,000 and that money goes towards our senior bus driver salaries. It pays a portion of their salaries. These funds help our senior citizen program by giving our seniors a way of transportation to get them to and from anywhere that they need to go, as long as it's in Springfield. So that could be like a doctor's appointment, restaurants, uh, Chisholm for their senior events, um, hair appointments, gym, anywhere that they need to go, as long as it is in Springfield. Um, our senior service is five days a week, Monday through Friday, and it is a free service, so they're not paying for it. We also bring our seniors on bus trips outside of Springfield. So that is like museums, casino trips, small trips, like Livingston Mall, we went to delish, Delicious Orchards, anything like that. And we're trying to constantly expand that and go to new places to keep it fresh for them. Springfield does have multiple senior housing complexes, so it is essential that we provide this service to our growing senior population. Our drivers service approximately 130 seniors annually, so a lot of seniors do use our service. The Recreation Department finds this grant extremely beneficial to the town because it helps us continue our commitment in benefiting our senior citizens in every way that we can. <laughs> we saw the pictures today. The pictures looked for, uh, you guys posted, Recreation posted pictures today. It looks pretty <laughs> <Thank you>. good. <laughs> All right, and if I may add to that, please. So the grant application for the CGB, CDBG programs are due by December 3rd. An application has been discussed with Public Works and a recommended project consists of paving improvements to Glenview Drive and Waverly Avenue, which are located within the eligible census block area. So that's what we're proposing for that. Huh. That was short and sweet. You got it. And does anyone have any questions or public comment? Nope. Oh, so, oh, oh, okay, so let's call in uh, public comment. If you have a public comment, I am sorry I forgot to read this earlier. <laughs> <sighs> Here we go. Okay. Uh, 
here we go. Meeting is broadcast live on local cable access Comcast Channel 35 and Verizon 46. It's also uh, viewed on the Springfield Township's YouTube page, Facebook page, and if you have any public comment right now, 973-232-4442. That's 973-232-4442. Phones are on. We have a 30 second delay with it. Um, so we started the 30 seconds already. Saw the pictures, you guys went on a uh, trip. The seniors went on a trip. Yeah, the casino trip. The casino trip. Yeah. Any big winners? Um, I'm not sure, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pictures looked great. It looked like everybody was having a good time. It is. Do they just go to one specific casino where they go to multiples? Okay, excellent. All right, seeing no public comment, we have nothing up here, right, guys? Nope. No, no, ladies? No. Okay. I'll uh, make a motion to close the public hearing of the CDBG grant. I will second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Aye. Um, we will go to public comment on agendas items only. Public comment agenda items only. Another 30 seconds, 973-232-4442. 973 232 I will read something real quick. Members of the public unable to attend the meeting in person may participate by submitting comments in writing by email questions to questions at springfield-nj.us or by letter to Township Administrator 100 Mountain Avenue, Springfield, New Jersey, 07081. All written comments must be received by the Township Administrator by 1 p.m. on the date of the meeting and must include the commenter's full name address in order to be read aloud during the public comment portion of the meeting. And I got nothing else on that. 30 seconds are up, and we will move on to reports. Are we going to jump to reports, oh. or can we go to our presentations? All right, let's hold off on reports, and let's go to our presentation then. It's going to be ordinance 2021-36. That's a 30, 30, 35. 35. Sorry, 35. 35. Okay. So just to, just to bring everybody up to date a little bit, this is a project that we have been working on for the past year and a half. It's Church Mall or Black's Lane. And we're excited to bring this to you, to everyone because this started out, just by way of background, if I may, this started out at 150 units. And Mike, what were we, five floors? Five floors, 150. So we're now down to 100 units and we're down to four floors. Mm -hmm. And as you'll see from the pictures, underground parking, um, it's, it's really a spectacular development. And on top of that, what we also did, I'd like to point out, is Spring Mill Manor, which borders this property. What we did is we included this. We made it one campus. And we asked the developer to take Spring Mill Manor and updated the facade so it reflected what the new building will look like. And they've done that for us also. Included in this, you'll see there's gotta be a pool and a playground on this property. So it's really a pretty spectacular development. I love it because it's down the street, it's walkable to the center, yet it's not directly in the center of the town. So I think it's a really nice development for us. The units are going to be very nice size. The two bedrooms are two bedrooms in the den, Mike, we're what, about 1,600 square feet? Yes. This is going to attract a totally different clientele than what we're currently seeing. This is geared towards the people that work from home and need some more room. These are going to be very upscale and the rent price will go along to reflect that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the financial agreement signed off on as of yet, but we do have the parameters for it. This will be a pilot. The pilot will be 10% the first year. Then it goes after 10 years, it goes to 11, then it goes to 12. Uh, Sarah Bailey property is included in this. Sarah Bailey property has been sold as part of this development. Uh, from a tax standpoint, because everybody's always interested in that, Right now, we are getting, the township is getting $16,000 for all of these lots currently. That's all we are collecting. The first year, the taxes on this will be $279,000, which we keep 95% of that. So that kind of gives you a little bit of background. Mike, if I forgot something, please. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to kill time while you were setting up. Also, Michael. When this project first came out years ago, we called the school. We were accused of not calling the school by some people in town. We called the school and told them exactly what it was, which it was more units at the time, and they said they had no problem with it. 
any project we have done, SACs, domes, we've always called the school first and told and went over with them before we went any further. And Rich, just so everybody understands, this actually has been on our plan since 2006. Six. So that was an area that was designated since 2006. It just never happened for whatever reason. So in 2021, we're finally to a point to, to bring this to you to present. I do want to thank, before we go any further, I do want to acknowledge and thank this committee. I want to thank Mr. Mistretta, Mr. Disco, and also our planning board. Our planning board provided us with some very good input that we incorporate into redevelopment agreement. So it was, a, it was actually a very good collaborative effort to get to where we are today. So that being said, Mike, why don't you take it away? Thank you. Um, I'm just going to try and fill in the blanks. I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to repeat everything you just heard. Uh, my name is Michael Mistretta. I'm a planner. I work, uh, my office is at, um, in Cranford, New Jersey. I work for Harvard Consultants. Um, again, we've been working on this redevelopment plan for about a year and a half. We're very excited about it. Um, your town has designated these properties starting in 2006, so this is nothing new. Um, over the years, 2006, the properties were expanded in 2014, additional properties were incorporated, and then again in two, uh, 2021, four additional properties were added to the redevelopment area. So these properties have been assembled since over, over the years, uh, you know, 14 to 16 plus years and it put together 4.9 acres, which allowed for a more comprehensive development as you see on this one board um, that I have up on the stand. It's a uh, concept plan that shows in the darker shade is the new building. The lighter shaded building is the existing Spring Manor building and it generally uh, surrounds the existing cemetery. Yep. And then across the street, Academy Green today runs right through the building and it's being relocated directly south in front of that L-shaped building. So the relocating Academy Green to put together this larger buildable area. And what we tried to do by put, amassing this uh, 4.9 acres is to create an overall campus where it's not just a new building, it's also a total renovation of the existing building that's on, at Spring Mill Manor that is right now getting a little bit old and outdated. So that building was incorporated into the project. One thing that's very, very important that we should note is these properties, four of these properties are already in our Fair Share Housing Center settlement agreement. That Can is, I call a timeout one second? Absolutely. We're, 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 we're just gonna having, we're gonna move the boards. We, we want the public to see the boards. Yeah. Because you've got so much good information going on here that you, you really need the visual to see this. Hang tight, everybody. Uh, if you're watching this, we're just adjusting the boards so you can see everything on our pictures right now. All right, I'm sorry. If, what board are we looking at now that you're talking about? Okay. I have two boards up. Okay. The first one is to my left. Okay. I'm going to start with the concept plan. Okay. And I just talked about the assemblage of these properties since 2006. And just to give the public some more information, this, the board that's on, up right now is a survey of what's been visited today. So we have Church Mall, Academy Green, the existing cemetery, and the existing Spring Mill Manor building with Flax Lane right here. So that's the existing condition. That's what exists today. This is the concept plan, second board. Again, existing Spring Hill Manor, just for orientation, remains exactly where it is. Church Mall, exactly where it is. So those are your bookends, and the development generally is in between those two bookends. The darker tan building, L-shaped building, is the new 
building. New Academy Green was up in here to be relocated to the south to connect Flax Lane. So Church Mall stayed the same, Academy Green gets relocated and they both connected to Flax Lane. And what we tried to do with this concept plan is over the years, again, since 2006, these properties, some of these properties, it's been assembled over <coughs> a period of time, have been assembled under redevelopment and, and uh, by the same developer, which has allowed us to put together this um, more comprehensive plan. Again, as uh, Mr. Vesicka was saying, the properties, uh, the project started at 150 units. It has been reduced down to 100 units, five stories down to four stories. In my world, a very important note is these properties are located in your settlement agreement with the court and fair share housing. So we are moving forward with an inclusionary housing project that fits, folds nice and neatly into our settlement agreement and advances that settlement agreement. So that's very positive. The next bill, the next boards, the two boards I'm gonna focus on Or this is the new building. Remember, the existing Spring Mill Manor stay in. This is the proposed 100 unit building. The first building, A1, to my left. This is Church Mall at the bottom of the drawing. Church Mall terminates at the cul de sac. This is the main entry of the building where you would pick up, drop off, or walk into the building. You can see the building at this stage is three stories along Church Mall. And then as you go down to the new Academy Green, the building goes from the very decorative entry of three stories as you go down to an expanse of four stories as you go down Academy Green. The road that you see at the bottom of A2, the second drawing, that building elevation to my right, is Black Lane. So if you can imagine driving up through Black Lane, you would pull if you go straight, you pull right into and under the new building. So it's a subterranean parking. All four sides or all elevations is written into the plan will is required to be designed and constructed to the same architectural design, same use of building materials. So there's not a really pretty front elevation and then the back elevation. Is, is something much less. Mm. So the entire building complex, the entire new building looks like this. Across from the Academy Green, there's a separate parking lot that will serve as overflow and guest parking for the development. Hey, can I point out one thing? Sure. This community in Hubert brought this up. Uh, the apartment building that's on the corner of Mars and Will Blocks Lane. Right, one of the things that we did is that this corner here we made them make this corner mirror the front of the building so that when they look out of their balconies, there's a couple of units that can see they're going to be looking at a finished product rather than a blank wall. So we made them upgrade this for those people. And I did contact all of them so they were aware of what was going on tonight. Your problem. So everybody knows that. You, you can see that all corners, the architect, I have to give credit, did a fantastic job. I don't know. The corners of the building, even at the end of Church Avenue, very decorative architectural element. The main architectural element at the main entryway, but then as you go all the way down Black Lane, you can see he carried it all the way through. Very, very decorative. This whole piece is nothing but a decorative piece of architecture. to dress up the architecture uh, and, and dress up the corner of the building. I love the fact that you drive under, not seeing all the cars. That is fully wrapped all the way around the building. So even if you're going to the back and the sides of the building, it's going to look like this elevation. In other words, there's no exposed car. So I think they did it. Do we have to do the amenity deck also? Yes. We should show that. We have that some red right there. Which one is building. Here's the section right through here on A6. This is the new Academy Green. 
the new three-story frontage of the building that you see, mm -hmm. three stories here. I love the fact that you've got the units here, they built units into the roof line instead of going with the three levels and then starting the roof after the third level, which would only create a much larger mass and it becomes too overbearing. So what they did was we made them bring the roof line down and put the units into the roof. Keep all the units up in here. All dormers cut out. That's yeah, right. Operable dormers. So you can have, it's a way of getting higher density, but you don't get that, that, that the appearance that the building is too large. Yeah. As I talked about, the, you go into, you go under the building to park. This is a subterranean garage. And then we made use of the back of the building by putting a concrete patio deck on top of the garage. And this is an outdoor amenity deck to approximately 7,500 square foot. So it's really making the most use of the property. And you don't see this wall in the front. You see this wall here, which is much more attractive. One of the other things also that we did do, I'd like to point out, is that Church Mall is going to be landscaped from here to the corner. So they'll put papers in, lighting, et cetera, et cetera. So as you drive down the street, I think it's going to be very inviting as you drive down there for this development. The next two boards I have focus on Spring Mill Matter. This A7. Uh, board to my left, there's a photograph of the existing conditions of Spring Manor. This is taken recently. This is the existing condition of the building. And when we we're doing this project, I, and I give the developer his professional credit, we started walking out there talking about it, and John really pushed this issue. The, the new building is going to be so built and so beautiful that we didn't want this brand new beautiful building next to the old age you know, building that's being a little outdated. So we worked with them. And what we did was they're going to improve the exterior facade of uh, Spring Mill Manor and bring that up to the same type of elevation. Not the exact same because already the brick is there, so we couldn't match that. But you can see architectural element added, architectural element added, doors added all the way across the front, walkout balconies, more architectural elements, another one here. Right now, it just looks like this. Mm -hmm. You see the existing Spring Mill Manor sign. It's popped up on a piece of concrete at the elevator shaft. So what we did was we just tried to make it more decorative. Uh, entranceway also dresses it up. Shutters and so forth. So what we're trying to do is create a campus between, so you don't, you know, they're both buildings. The entire campus looks attractive when you uh, go there. The numbers very quickly. It's a 100 unit building, 85 are market rate units. Of those 85, 25 are one bedrooms, 60 are two bedrooms, 15 are those affordable housing units, which is fantastic in my world. We are supposed to capture these inclusionary units, so we're advancing our plan. And I, I think that's fantastic. I mean, from an affordable housing perspective, it's very helpful for us. It shows that the town is serious about its uh, affordable housing obligation, and we're advancing that target. Very critical. The whole world project is fully parked under RSI standards. So we have sufficient parking for both buildings, guest parking, so much so that we're actually banking some of the parking on Academy Green. And like John, I'll just conclude with this real quick substantial amount of off-site improvements. We have new walkways and pedestrian walkways, not only along the frontage of the buildings, but we're extending it all the way down Academy Green to Morris Avenue. And then also, as a requirement of the redevelopment plan, the developer is required to study the traffic improvements at Academy Green and <clears throat> Morris Avenue. And it specifically states the intersection um, is going to be examined for the need for an addition of a second travel lane on Church Mall and the modification of the timing of the traffic lights so we can move cars out of Academy Green onto Morris Avenue. I think I understand. Can you run through the numbers, of the, the units? I know 15 for affordable. What mm -hmm. was the per one bedroom, two bedrooms? Can you use sure. those again? 85 market. 
A hundred altogether in the new building. No density changes in the existing Spring Mill Manor building. So when I say 100 units, I'm only speaking about this one new building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are 85 market rate units in that building. Of those 85, 60 are two bedroom units with a minimum average size of 1,000 square feet and 25 one bedroom units with a minimum average size of 900 square feet. So those are 85. Three, three bedroom units are prohibited. Three bed, uh, let me clarify that. Three bedroom market rate units are prohibited. But in affordable. There's, yeah, now the affordable, the 15, this is required by the UHAC rules. We, we don't have a choice on this distribution. This is required in order for us to get our credits. It's three one bedroom affordable housing units, nine two bedrooms, and three three bedrooms. Three, nine, three. One, two, three. It's a breakdown, and that's the requirements <clears throat> under the UHAC rules. So when we do our annual reports on affordable housing and are meeting our obligation, we can demonstrate that we're, we're exceeding what we had originally on this plan because we assembled a larger piece of property, so it puts us in a really good standing, fully parked project, there's amenities built inside, inside the project, as well as common amenities are being constructed on the exterior. We have a patio, pool, children's playground area, and paths throughout the project. So we really try to create a campus feel. The, the outdoor amenities are to be used by all of the residents, not just the Spring Mill Manor or the new market rate. So I love the fact that you have all of the you know residents on both sides using those amenities like i got two questions uh there's a light green spot attached to the building is that the deck that's the outdoor amenity that's the amenity deck so okay it, number it really shouldn't be green but we're, we're we wanted it to pop off the plan because yep. it gets lost sometimes maybe a lighter shade of uh brown or something no. would be more appropriate but i think it's important because as i showed you on that one elevation you're living in here, you have a place to go. If you're not even leaving your building, and you have a, it's almost 8,000 square foot of an of a elevation that you're able to go outside. I think that's very important. And then you have a, 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 a you know, pool attached with the, with the playground. The, the pass, the pool, the patio, I, I mean, I just think it's a great way. And I, I really like the concept of we, we didn't neglect or hide or try to run away from Spring Mill Manor. We, we, we're refreshing it, yeah. bringing it up to date, and incorporating it with a market rate unit, so a, a market rate project. So, you know, the, ideally, you yeah, have some you know mix of the amenities and the use of it. And I, I think it'll. I, I just I love how it lays out because I think it's going to bring a lot of fresh life into not only the new project but. The existing building. I, I think the renderings are beautiful. I think some of the things that the general public typ typically <coughs> ask about in regards to redevelopment and things, and I don't know how much of it we can touch on right now, but like if we can discuss a little bit about like the environmental impact and what's done, what people don't know is thought about and considered in regards to this, especially after all the storms we've been having, and you know, you know, so things like if we could touch on anything in regards to what is considered in these projects in regards to the environment that people may not know is already taken into consideration. Um, also, the impact on schools, if we could just touch base quickly that we do address that, that there are experts that look into that. And then um, the affordable housing aspect, because people hear affordable housing and they conjure up images in their head of, of that terminology and what that means. And if we could just touch base on what that actually means as opposed to what people think it means. Sure. just in case anybody does watch this so they can sure. get a little refresher sure one uh quickly yeah. first one uh resiliency planning or what we're calling it nowadays redeveloping older underutilized properties where there's a lot of impervious coverage we're not taking down a substantial amount of mature vegetation we're staying for the most part within the existing building footprint in the disturbed areas there is some vegetation coming down on Easternmost wing of the new building, but a lot of it is refurbishing 
existing underutilized properties, which is classic mm -hmm. redevelopment. That's what you want to do. You don't want to put new buildings like this out in the middle, if you can, pristine wooded areas and so forth. So using redevelopment to turn around underutilized properties is, is perfect. Two, um, we had meetings with both the town committee and the planning board members. We met with the engineers of the project they, to address flooding and concerns about, I spoke a lot about that subterranean garage and we went out there, well, no, not we, the developers and engineers went out there and did soil logs and test fits within the building envelope to identify where the uh, seasonal high water table elevation is and making sure that the building is set above that elevation plus some, I forget the exact number of feet above it, so that we can ensure that this quote unquote subterranean garage, those cars will not flood, that we're staying outside of the flood zone. Yeah, but your garage, I don't mean to interrupt you, your garage showed that it was underground, am I correct? It's yeah. partially, it's partially. It starts at grade, it, it starts mm -hmm. at grade. If but there's one level underneath, right? Yeah, if it floods, it's gonna flood. I it, mean. It, but it, that's why we have a study, so we right. don't have that situation. So we had them, this is where, this entire section is that subterranean parking. In the beginning, as you're driving from Black Plain, it's at grade, it's not underground. As you go through the garage, it does drop down, you're 100% correct. So in order to protect those vehicles underneath there, they went out and they did a number of soil tests. Mm -hmm. Identified what the seasonal high water table elevation is in those areas, and then set the building above that the floor of the slab of the garage above that so that we can ensure it doesn't flood. We also, the maps are in the redevelopment plan. If anybody from the public has uh, any questions on it, we map the floodplain, the DEP floodplain on those maps. So we are above that. And did Carla go over the, the garage itself and, and make sure and prove it, getting down below in case we have to get down there for emergency vehicles? I've had police, fire, EMS, everybody <coughs> in this development before we did anything. Okay. okay. Everybody's on board with that. And before I forget, we can bring this up. I don't want to stop you, but the graveyard, because I know that's I really was just going to ask that question. Just don't let me forget. There's, well, I won't jump there yet. Do you want to, well, can, can I just go back to one thing you said about five minutes ago? You talked about changing Church Mall, you, you talk, the traffic pattern you, you talked about. No. We're talking about the end of it, where it comes out to Mars Ave. Yes. They're going to have to look at making that two lanes, so you have a left turn lane. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, left, right, and one entering in. Yes. So the entering in will still happen, and then oh, yeah. Black's Lane essentially is a still one way, existing yeah. one way. Existing one way. Supposed to be mm -hmm. one way. I, I, I didn't mean it. Just like a back, back, back way in, I guess. And it really doesn't make sense, quite frankly, to make that a two-way. First of all, it's not wide enough. Mm -hmm. Second of all, imagine what it would be like trying to make a left out of there with no traffic light. Right. You would never right. get across Mars Avenue. So that is just a bonus entrance into the place, really. Black Lane is okay. existing one way. It's going to stay one way okay. post-construction. Church Mall, we put a specific requirement in the redevelopment plan. Because we all know when you come down Church Mall, it's very hard to get out. Mm -hmm. All right, right now with no development back there, it's hard to get out. So one is the timing of how many cars can get through that light when you do get the green. The second issue is there's only one lane. So one lane, and if you get behind somebody, that's just going to create a greater queue. Right. With this many new residents back there, we put a requirement in there that they have to study that light, and we put a recommendation in for one extra lane, so you have a left and a right. Mm -hmm. And, but that's still not enough. It's about the timing of the light as well. Yeah. If you put those two together, and that's exactly how the plan is written at their cost. For visitors that are coming in, or somebody's let, let somebody's coming down, and they they come down there and they have to turn around or they have to get out of there. There's space on that project where cars can come in and you know, oh wrong building, let me abandon this and come around and, and without. First of making all, K-turns all over the place? We're not changing the width of Church Mall down there. Okay. Church Mall is very wide down there, first of all. And there's some additional parking lots uh, that you can certainly make a U-turn in okay. in the, the development to get back out. To answer your question, if I come down, I entered a project through mm -hmm. Black Lane, which yep. is one way, and I'm like, whoops, I've got a problem. Mm -hmm. Then I just go down to the new proposed Academy Green, and I leave. 
right out. second question was the settlement agreement, fair share housing and, and affordable housing. Um, it's our constitutional obligation, our township entered into the settlement agreement. We identified some of these properties, not all of them, because again, it has expanded since 2006. And we said as our community that this is one of the properties that we're gonna provide for inclusionary housing. Inclusionary housing means that there's a mixture of market rate and affordable housing. Um, why it works here is they're gonna be dispersed throughout the um, market rate unit. So there's 85 market, there's 15 affordable. There's a, there's a misconception on affordable housing, especially in Union County, especially in Springfield. Uh, Union County holds the rents. But a family of four, I don't have my sheet with me and I should and I apologize, but it, it's almost $80,000 for a family of four is what's considered moderate income housing in, in Union County in our region, Region 2. Um, our numbers, quite frankly, we're in one of such a wealthy region that the numbers are so high that, you know, it, it bothers me a lot when people start, you know, earmarking affordable housing. And affordable housing is, you know, if you're making $80,000, $79,000 a year, and you're a family of four, technically, you qualify for moderate income housing and you can live in this development. So I think that's a really good thing. Um, we have our obligation. We have to address this number. We've submitted this plan. It's been approved by the court. We get checked up by the court on an annual basis to see how we're doing, whether we're doing what we're supposed to be doing or whether we're not. So it only puts the town in good light. We're doing what we said we're going to do. The, if I, I could share the numbers at another time on what they are, but I, I think it's, I don't want to start. I don't want to start guessing what the numbers are, but they're very high. Uh, income limits, um, I don't know what else to say on it. I, I, I think it's very positive for us. Um, when, when, did these pro when did these properties start becoming acquired? When, when did this project take life? Was well, this, is this 10 remember, years already? How, how long is this? The Beale properties came before the planning board several years ago. That was probably, I don't know, three, four years ago? Longer, right? Longer. Mm -hmm. And then those got sold off. And as time went on, Barton Homes kept acquiring everything that they could. The only missing piece, quite frankly, is Sarah Bailey. Sarah Bailey and the Green and yeah. the Black Slane. So they've, they've essentially acquired everything over the last five, six years at this point. Yeah, yeah at least. It may be a little bit longer. It's classic redevelopment, exactly what you want to happen. Mm -hmm. Underutilized properties, uh, John said the amount of money that the town's getting out of them is very little. They're on the books already that we said this development's going to happen here. The fact that they were able to assemble a larger area and deliver a project to this level of scale is just nothing but positive. It's beautiful. And the fact that, I love the fact that you're not up right on top of Morris Avenue. You're a step back just a little bit. Right. It's a little bit quieter back yep. there. When you walk back there, it's a beautiful area back there. It's screaming mm -hmm. that something should happen here. So you've identified those accounts. 2006, something should happen here. The fact that they were able to assemble these pieces of properties, deliver a product to the scale, I mean, th this, is, this is a great place to live. So whether you're affordable, whether you're market, quiet, we're gonna have brand new pedestrian improvements all the way down Church Mall to North Avenue. You walk down, you you know visit our downtown, and then you go back home nice and quiet and peaceful. Let's talk about the cemetery because we spent a lot of time. Speaking of quiet and peaceful. <laughs> yeah, there's a place there with problems. But um, major components, there's a whole section uh, written into the redevelopment plan. We listened to the town committee's comments on the concerns about the cemetery. The planning board members brought the exact same concerns and even more. So one is we have parking earmarked on Church Mall. So if anybody's coming to visit anybody at the cemetery. There's going to be parking spaces that are not for the guests to be used for all that parking for the new project, but they're public parking spaces. If 
you're going to visit the cemetery, you'll park on Church Mall. It'll be signed appropriately. We have a new driveway extending from the end of Church Mall into the cemetery with paths that are going to be used both for the cemetery and for the amenities. So you have actually improved pedestrian access. The driveway is a vehicular it's wide enough so if a truck needs to go in, they can. Is the cemetery that entire light green shade in between the dark green and the that whole? Okay. Yep. Okay. Now we've also discussed with them about shoring. We have specific construction standards built into the plan so we can ensure the integrity of the cemetery. So there's no there's shoring that's going to be put in place. So you're not going to get too close. You're not going to have erosion or any disturbance whatsoever to the cemetery. That's all folded into it also. And then there's maintenance. So we've addressed construction, pedestrian access, vehicular access, and the maintenance. So the, the cemetery went in front of the planning board and included the part of the subdivision where there's a maintenance agreement so that in the future, a group will ensure that the cemetery is maintained to a certain level. But our redevelopment plan took it one step further and says, if for whatever reason that doesn't happen, this developer is responsible for the maintenance of the cemetery. So I think we've adequately addressed construction, maintenance, pedestrian access, vehicular access, and, and, and given sufficient parking to anybody who wants to visit the cemetery. Would and that we'll get a new decorative fence also around the entire cemetery once it's so they're, they're, they're agreeing to basically maintain this forever going forward. Yep. yep. It's Instead of it being because abandoned. It's going to be such an important part of land because right. they're building so close to it that if you're on this deck or any, any view out of here, they want this to mm -hmm. help it's in their interest that this looks beautiful. That's a, be that's a closed cemetery at this point, right? I, I don't know. We saw some gravestones that actually were not that old. So it's possible. I don't know if anybody's being buried there currently, but well, I'm guessing that once the church went out of business, that's it. Uh, they were the only ones. Well, they're in Kenilworth it. now. Oh. They they actually moved. They still own the land, though. Yeah. Yes. All right, and they are in agreement with this maintenance agreement and everything. Their else. maintenance agreement is an exhibit to this redevelopment plan. So we actually have two separate maintenance agreements. If if one doesn't do it, they have to do it. So. Uh, and I guess I, I guess I'm repeating it over and over again just to get so anybody who's listening gets full clarification that they are on board with this 100 percent. This is 100%. not us pushing something on them. This is not us well, approaching on them. Or it was a it was an ask from our part to yeah, get them. But, but they yes, gladly, they totally agreed, mm -hmm. and it's signed off on. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Something sure. we missed or? We got everything. No. No. That, that's great. Beautiful. Yeah, we should have the financial agreement Matt's working on. We should have that in the not too distant future, probably in December. And at that point, you know, he can come in and explain the pilot and all the other numbers. If anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them. But, uh, you know, like I said, uh, we think it's a great project for us. And, and getting to sell Sarah Bailey as we did was a home run for us because you know what condition that property was in. Mm -hmm. It's just. It, it, it was, and, and to be clear, Sarah was Bailey was not safe. It was not savable. It was not savable. It was not rebuildable. No. It was not anything. We were going to have to actually knock it down. It was had to be knocked. It had to be. It was fully condemned, and that was it. It was yeah. there was no saving Sarah Bailey, yeah. and so it is also not a historical building. No. Right. Okay. And I just want to thank Mr. Mastretti, the architect, the builder, the planner. Uh, Mr. Basicolo, our planning board, all there was this was kind of an all hands on deck uh, plan and it, it absolutely looks beautiful, well thought out, well well developed and uh, I'm excited about the project for sure. Nice job all around. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, you know, one last question, sorry. All of the black top, all that stuff there, that's all permeable that that's all water absorbing materials like Erica had got into before. It's the asphalt water permeable paving, um, not necessarily. The new roads, I mean, the Academy Green, um, Lessard Town Engineer would accept the Academy. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Mm -hmm. I would say we would want our little academy green, black swing, and any improvements on the church mall to be regular pavement. That's regular. Just, I, I can't speak for it. But, okay. but, but you, you I can, would, you, I would advocate for that. you can also absolutely understand a concern with the impervious surfaces and drainage and just making sure with the waters that we have and the waters that we continue to get that Absolutely. we've remediated this in our plans as much and as possible. that was a topic of conversation, believe yeah, me. Perfect. Every one of these projects, topic, once I get past the pretty pictures and get, if I survive that, yeah. the number one issue is saving every tree we possibly can, keeping as much green as possible, Good. and whatever impervious coverage you do put down, meeting the new stormwater management standards and protecting all those properties from flooding. Perfect. That's textbook 101. Most people don't want to get into that type of detail on these presentations, but I, I agree with you 100%. Stormwater management, mm -hmm. best management practice, the maximum amount of permeable paving or other um, vegetative means is absolutely cool. Great answer for Springfield. We appreciate that. <laughs> I, I see what happens in your downtown. I, I, I recognize Thank you. No okay. further questions. I guess we we'll go to no. public or whatever we need to. We'll go to public comment. We're, we did not do public comment yet. So we did we did agenda comment on agenda. Right? We did that yeah, oh, we did it on agenda yeah. only. Okay. Yeah, leave them up for the white. So um, can, all right. Um, well, I need the. We have to read the ordinance and, and make a motion for it. Oh, we're not at the we're ordinance yet. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to. Oh, we'll just let that sit. Okay. We're gonna leave okay. So let's go back then. Yep. Okay. Okay. Reports. All right. So now we'll go on to administrator's report with Mr. John Pacifico. Oh, I'm tired now. I need a break. <laughs> that, was, that was your whole report right there. All just right. about. A uh, couple of things I wanted to bring up, if I may, uh, on our developments. Uh, Sachs property continues to motor along. They're making great progress. I think it's December 2nd or so that they're going to start the prefabricated garage, and they said that'll take about 10 days for that to happen. Wow. So that's going to be exciting to watch go up, actually. Um, Charlie Larkin's building. Charlie is called for final inspections on the 30th. And if that passes, next Tuesday, actually it is, he's done. Then he can start renting. And we don't anticipate any holdup, actually, from where we were the last time we were in. So we think he's going to pass with no problem. On our Gomes project, um, we had another conference call with him on Monday. Uh, he's going to get us a construction schedule, and that will be presented to us on 12-3. There should be a crane on site today. I did not see one when I came in, so we'll check on that tomorrow. Um, I can tell you also we had an issue with the road. We happened to notice that Center Street, the barriers, the Jersey barriers that were piled up next to the fence were starting to tilt in. Mm -hmm. We were losing the road because they dug the foundation out and never backfilled it. And as a year and a half has gone by, the soil's starting to shift. So they had to come out and backfill it. Now, I, I had Bob Herbert and Jerry Iger go out and Mike Disco go out this morning and walk that property again. If you noticed when you came in, the corner of Morris Avenue and Center Street is blocked off mm -hmm. right at the corner. There's some, there's some undercutting of the sidewalk still there that needs to be fixed. We don't want anybody parking there until that's done. Right. Our concern was you get a bus or something stops there. We don't want to end up losing the street. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are on that project, unfortunately. Um, and you saw what we're at on this project, so we're looking forward to seeing that done. From our DPW department, I'll read you a couple things that's happening. Our leaf collection. Because the weather's been warm, it's causing leaves to fall more slowly than we would like to. Uh, to date, we've only collected about half of the yards that we collected at the same time last year. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to collect leaves until 1231. Holiday tree lighting. The hometown hero banners were all removed for the winter months before setting up the holiday decorations, which were completed today. On road renovations, Mount View Road was finished ahead of time and under budget. Now, I know there's striping that needs to be done, but we need to have that sit for two weeks before the striping can be done. We ended up doing this year, that completes our, our road renovations for this year. We ended up renovating between our own in-house 
um, grants that we got, that type of thing. We've renovated 20 streets in 2021, which is a pretty good chunk of, of asphalt was done. And we made very good progress there. Uh, I just wanted to mention from our engineering department, Mike Disco put in for a grant for us and we did, we were successful. We got about $400,000 that's gonna be for Fatum Road and a section of Diamond Road will be done sometime next year. Other than that, I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff, but at the moment, I'm kind of drawing a little bit of a blank. So nope. anybody has questions or comments, please let me know. I will answer if I can, I will get you the answers. Okay. Uh, thank you for staying on all this and thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, spe especially, yeah, the, what, what you guys are creating here is, is yeah. I'm really excited about this one. I it's really good. think this is gonna be a, a great development for us. And I don't think it was mentioned, but I mean, even you, 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 the detail onto it, there's no more, you know, 1.6 parking spaces per unit. It is nope. a, an official two parking spaces. We're actually over parked. We're over parked. Yep. That's, that's how it should be. That's awesome. Will it be done before it goes? <laughs> <laughs> goes without saying. Don't, don't joke like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, we are gonna have a bit update with someone we haven't seen in a lot, Mr. Scalera. How are you? I'm doing awesome, and again, I'm great. really uh, happy to be here today. Uh, John did a great job. Mike's done a fantastic job also in regards to what you can see here. We're really excited about it. We, knew, we know these things are coming, and we've been meeting uh, privately with the bid, our bid group, um, with strategic, st strategic, strategic plan meetings. Uh, with them in regards to going on what's happening uh, with redevelopment. So we're reevaluating where we are at for 2022, obviously uh, 2020 and 2019 because of COVID, they just put a stall on it, but we're really, uh, really excited with these types of things because we're gonna see people coming into town, Garden Homes, obviously, Gomes property, knock on wood, uh, Charlie Larkin with his property, and there's more to come and we're working hard behind the scenes to make sure there is more to come. So we're getting ready for that. Uh, all the businesses are excited on all these things that are happening because again, it's gonna drive people to them and uh, make them successful. But most importantly too, the residents in Springfield are just as much as excited. So to see this all happening in front of our eyes, it's, in a, it's, it's incredible to see what Springfield will be within a two to three year period and it's here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see it, and there's more to come. Um, so, with that being said, we've we had our meeting today, and we are we are meeting uh, in regards to what direction we're going to in 2022, and we're very much inside, excited about it. Um, we have new goals and new expectations of what's happening. Um, we're also started. I sent all of you. Um, me and Erica talked about this the last time uh, in regards. We started a Facebook page in regards to jobs. Um, so. Um, it's, it's out, uh, we're sending it to all the businesses in Springfield. They're gonna post their job descriptions and what they're looking for, and then people in Springfield can go on the Springfield, New Jersey job page and uh, see if, they, if it fits for them. And again, it won't only be just Springfield, we'll send it out to all the other people in the areas to support the Springfield businesses to, uh, to promote what's going on in there. So again, it works great together. Um, so you're looking for a job, you go to the Springfield, New Jersey uh, business job page, and again, you can uh, apply for a job. Retail, industrial, all administrative, of it. like All of it, everything. professional. So our job right now is to get out to them, have them post it. Um, we just started within the past week. So once the jobs start coming in, I will be posting on the resident page and everything. So if anybody's looking for a job within Springfield, go right there and it'll be there. So we're really excited about that. Um, Go back to the, um, the gift certificate program. You know, I kept saying that this, the bids uh, spent over the past year $20,000, but it's so much more than that. They sold over 2,000 gift certificates. So what that comes to is $50,000 in gift certificates that went back to the businesses. And not only that, it also, people came back to these businesses. So we're antici we anticipated the $20,000 investment that we did probably brought over $100,000 in income to the businesses in Springfield. So we are very much excited about redevelopment happening because we're on it and we're really poised to really make this part 
of what's going on in Springfield and promote it. So again, I want to thank all you guys. You guys have been tremendous to work with. 2022 is going to be fantastic and on. And again, we're anticipating more of this happening over the past two years and everything. And again, we're on the change right here now. So, but again, thank you again. Can I just, I just want to tell you something. So I drove down the other day, Mountain Avenue. I was going to actually stop and take a picture. <laughs> so Mountain pretty. Avenue looks fabulous. Like yep. that, those little rows of stores. Really if big. if Morris Avenue ends up looking even uh, a quarter of what that it, it, wonderful like I was just gonna take a picture and post yeah. it on the on the on the pages and go look at how wonderful it's this funny is you out. say that because I was coming home mm -hmm. last night or the night before and I was coming down mountain and I was at the light at the shell to make yeah. it right mm -hmm. and just looking straight it just looks so pretty like it was just yeah, firehouse is, is is lit up yeah it's really just, firehouse. It's pretty home run town hall home run like yeah, this yeah it's great because what we did we also um, we had the the all the ornaments put up the lighting ornaments last year but we spent another fifteen thousand um, dollars to decorate more of Mount Avenue. It was worth it. So it was definitely worth it and again yeah. it's to promote the view, the visual where people come and they go wow what a great holiday spirit. So we did the street we also have an approval for the streetscape we approved it uh, today that we are going to extend the streetscape you know we're uh, Dr. Heck's offices and also a Welsh Farms in, so we're going to extend the street, streetscape, so we approved it there. And then what also we have, because we have the design criteria for the streetscape, that's going to be applicable for Morris Avenue. So we have all the design criteria all set up, and once Morris Avenue now becomes another area for redevelopment, then we can implement the design criteria uh, to the redevelopers what we already have in place so again it's all coming together this is all it's it's all fabulous and everything but again uh, uh the streetscape will be done the lighting will be done also and again we, we put more money in because again the more we can do and make it look great for the business and people come out it's really fabulous you see all the kids hanging out yeah i'm telling you it's uh, it's really it's really incredible to see so like, i'm trying to figure out a way to to keep different kinds of lights all year round different <laughs> themes or whatever because it just looks that inviting yes Exactly. So, so thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you Mike, guys. I have a question for you. I sure. know I keep bringing this up to you, but I know that you just spoke about a uh, streetscape plan that you approved. Keep bringing up South Springfield Avenue opposite side of the Shell Station, that little strip. Yeah, we, uh, we checked into that, that South Springfield. It's, it's not doable because of the trees. Those huge trees there, we'd have to hire an arbor, arborist um, to see if the trees could be taken down. Okay. And the cost factor would be um, beyond our means and everything. So we were put, not to say that we, we talked about it today, right. not to say that we would not do it, but right now it's on a hold. So right. that section there, we just, we just um, you know, we backed off a little bit on it. Between, and, and I've said this before, and I appreciate that, but I've said this before, between St. James and the school, there's a lot of you know, kids and, yep. and parents that walk that street too that would be yeah, there's a lot of trees, a lot of huge trees there and everything. So that, that was where the issue came. It wasn't like the Mountain Avenue where we just go in and we just do it. Gotcha. It, it did become a big issue when we talked to the engineer and the architect in regards to it. And he, he was kind of the one that advised us on it. All right. But thank you, Chris. Thank you. Anything else? Approved. All right. Thank you all, Thanks, guys. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thank uh, you. Everybody's We're going to throw an additional bonus information package in here right up the mid update we're going to go with mr. Capadis and a library update because I know a lot of people are wanting to know what's happening with the library well, thank you mr. mayor I appreciate it and uh, thank you all for your patience I know that there has been a lot of talk about the library a lot of concern for the library I know that every single member I can safely speak for every single member of the township committee up here along with our, our township saying how important the library is and to be back uh, in action soon. Uh, as the mayor representative to the library board, I've had the pleasure to work with Dale Spindell and President Trish Golden on the remediation of the library. And I just want to give a brief synopsis of where we are. Um, unfortunately, uh, Ida hit the library pretty bad. I'm sure you all saw the, fa the pictures on Facebook. Uh, and since the library has been hit, we've been working on remediating uh, the library, and unfortunately, it is taking uh, longer than any one of us have, has, has expected. Uh, first and foremost, we had to get companies, and again, everybody's looking for the same companies that, that, that this happened to, uh, to go in and take an honest assessment of what exact damage has been done to the library. 
Uh, we had two and possibly three assessments done to really streamline the exact work that needs to be done uh, to remediate the library. And we did, you know, in no, no small part between the library, the DPW, and the administrator's office, we were, and um, also uh, Mr. Disco, our engineer, we were able to streamline and uh, pick those items that do need the remediate, remediation. We have drywall, carpet we have to do, some bookcases. There might be some places where their mold is being done. Uh, we are currently trying to get estimates and vendors uh, to come in and do this work. Um, the library is in receipt and is still in receipt of uh, either insurance money, grant money, or FEMA money to help subsidize these costs. And when that is done, um, it will be a collaborative effort between the town and the vendors uh, to remediate the damage to the library to get us up and running again very soon. Uh, again, includes the children's room carpet, some drywall, that uh, a lot of drywall that needs to be replaced, some mold where applicable, and also some of the bookshelves that might have sustained some damage. Uh, and uh, preliminary discussions that we've had, uh, we feel safe to say that a target date of April, the month of April, is where we'll be able to accept patrons once again. But I also want to take the time to applaud the library staff um, I don't know about your houses, but Miss Bree online in Facebook, she does the library programs. She's got rock star status in my house. Uh, she's been very, very popular. They continue to distribute books. They continue to do curbside service. So being down as much as they are, I really want to give credit to the library to still providing services to our residents. But if you're anything like us, you do want the library up and running as soon as possible. Uh, we will have a library again for our residents. It will be up and running. And we, we feel comfortable to say by April, um, we will be able to accept patrons to the library once again. But I just thought, just, just thought it was important uh, that you receive an update. I know I haven't spoken about it in quite some time, um, but I just wanted to give some parameters to where we were. And um, you know we're excited about the library opening again soon. I, I gotta ask, I, I didn't expect April. It, there's any chance of earlier or really we don't know you know everybody uh, yes we would all like earlier but everybody's after the same thing right now everybody's after vendors everybody's after construction workers everybody's after contractors everybody's after material and in an industrial i know it doesn't sound like it but in an industrial space if you will like the library is material is just very material and workers are just too too few and far between Aren't they with, um, didn't the library sign up, sign up with Cranford that we the, they could go there if they want to go into a yes, library? There's a, library somewhere, right? Yes, there's an interlocal library agreement through the county that you can, that the library card will work in certain um, other municipality libraries. Go to their website. Their website is yeah. very, very informative uh, and robust with that information to find out not only how you can uh, take out books from our library and take out materials from our library, but also use your card to other libraries within the county. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we're going to go and pay some bills with Deputy Mayor Kaiser. <laughs> uh, finance. I'll make a motion to accept the payroll and invoices for the period of November, November 10th through November 23rd, 2021, in the amount of four million eight hundred thirty-eight thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars and eighty-three cents. I will second. And everybody should have received in their packet tonight the October budget, mm -hmm. the October revenue report, uh, the October pool budget, and the October pool revenue report. Okay. I'll do a roll call on the payroll and invoices. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Min Capitis. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Minnie Min Huber? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. We'll move on to new business. Ordinances, second reading. Okay, second reading for Ordinance 2021-30. This ordinance updates the inspection fees set forth in Chapter 18 of the Township Code. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve for second reading ordinance 2021-30 as read by Madam Clerk and approve for publication in the local source for December 2nd, 2021. Second. Okay, we're going to go for public comment. If there's any public comment on this, please give us a call. 
973-232-4442. I don't see any public comment from the audience. Um, we're on a 30 second delay. Um, Not for long, two months, three months. Yeah, maybe. right? Yeah. Can't wait till those cameras come. Yep. That's it. Um, any discussion at all up here? Or we're good? No. We're good. No, we all right. Roll call vote, please. Committee Min Capitis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yeah. Mayor Weber? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Madam Clerk, uh, before we do the first readings, I would like to make a motion to table Ordinance 2021 34, or can we just remove it from the agenda, please? Motion to table would be the would be the appropriate. So, Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to table Ordinance 2021-34. Second. Okay. Roll, uh, do we have to roll call that? Yeah. Yeah, roll call that. Roll call. Committee Min Capitis? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, first reading then on Ordinance 2021-33. This ordinance amends and supplements the curbside collection provisions of Chapter 22, Solid Waste Management of the Township Code. I make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2021-30 as read by Madam Clerk. Publication, 30, local 30, source, 30. December 2nd, 2021. 33. That's it. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the top. 2021-33, as read by Madam Clerk. Local source December 2nd, 2021, with a final hearing on December 14th, 2021. Thank you. Any discussion up here at all? Can I just bring up what this is so everybody yes. yeah. understands? <laughs> we were having issues with plastic bags being put out for garbage. And what happens with them, as everyone knows, is that animals get into them, rip them up. We end up with garbage all over the street. So this amends the ordinance now, so you have to put out a garbage can, basically. And Craig, there were some other items that we touched on in there also. Yes. If you want to. Uh, the two other items in, in this ordinance, one is to remove from the description of bulky waste, vegetative material. We, we have separate types of um, ways to handle vegetative waste within the town. So that removes it from bulky waste, so you can no longer put things like yard waste uh, or light brush or logs mm -hmm. out at bulky, uh, at bulky waste pickup day. Um, the other issue is, it's, very, it's the last one, and it comes under 22-3.2. Um, uh, this is a requirement for garbage containers to be secured either, uh, the idea is so that they're, they're not in view from a public street. So they have to be secured either behind the front um, building line um, and no closer than 10 feet to neighboring properties. And it's to be screened in, in some, way, some way, shape, or form so that they're not visible from the public, from a public we, street. We were having an issue with them being put in the front of the house. Oh, leaving them there all the yes. time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this, this addresses containers after, not not when you're putting them out. Well, and not after they're ready. Ready. Yeah, after pickup. It's they, after they were, pick up in between the pickup <laughs> days. Yeah. They were leaving them in the driveway, lined up in the driveway. Mm -hmm. So and so. Right. Did we put a oh, did we put a, 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 a number of cans? It's already. No. Are you making an announcement? Thursday's pickup is Saturday. Friday? Saturday. 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 Okay, because you know they're going to be calling all of us. They have. Been. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Linda's already getting. Okay, because <laughs> you know people are calling Thanksgiving Day saying, "Well, let me pick up my garbage." In bulk is December first. December what? First. first. It's the most wonderful <laughs> time of the year. Okay. Okay, so we have. Um, roll call. Okay, we'll, we'll do a roll call on it. We'll finish that, and I just want—I'll add something at the end. Just want to add something. Committee, committee woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Min Capitis. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. All right. So um, just want to one more time because this affects a lot of houses. Cans for, at this point have to be, will have to be from the house line back, would have to be cited. There is only two cans per household with the exception of recycling. Uh, yes. And that's the exist, that's in the ordinance. That's, right. that's the existing order. That's the existing order. Okay. And then Saturday pickup is for anybody who's missing out on Thursday because of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, Ordinance 2021-35. This ordinance of the Township of Springfield, County of Union, New Jersey, is adopting the redevelopment plan for block 208, lot six through nine, block 209, lot 1.01, and lots four through six, the Academy Green right of way, and a portion of the Black Lane right of way. I make a motion to adopt ordinance 2021-35 as read by Madam Clerk. Publication in local source December 2nd, 2021. Final hearing December 14th, 2021. Second. All right, we have any discussion on this at all, which right. we just covered? No, we just just covered I just want to make one comment for the yep. public that anybody that would like to come in, see the boards or have any questions, I'm going to leave them up here in the courtroom. I'm available every day, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Please, you're welcome to come in and, and view and ask anything you would like. Cool. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, they must stop at your office first. They just can't walk up here. People will be walking up here. Okay. The door will People do. <laughs> yeah. Well, the door's probably locked. Door's so. locked. Say hi. Okay. Uh, Committee woman Dubois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Min Capitis. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Webb. Yes. All right. I will read resolutions. We will approve them by consent agenda. We have. We need a motion. Oh. 283. I'm sorry. We're going to. Uh, I need a motion. Right. To amend resolution. The agenda. To amend the agenda to include resolution. Sorry. 2021 283. Motion. Second. This is 83. This is 82. No, it's got to no. be 82. 283. 83. 83. Typo. I will, I will make the motion as uh, stated by the mayor to include resolution 2021-283 to this evening's agenda. Second. I don't know. I missed that. Okay. Roll call. A roll yes. call. Sorry. Yeah. Committee Min Capitis? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Um, all right, so we're going to read the resolutions. 2021-272, uh, 2021-273, 2021 Okay, I will make a motion to adopt the following resolutions on consent agenda. Resolution 2021-273 through resolution 2021-280, and then we'll pick that back up with resolution 2021-282 and resolution 2021-283. I second. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Uh, yes. Committeeman Capitis? Yes. Committeewoman Dubois? Yes. Committeeman Huber? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Okay. Resolution 2021-281. This resolution authorizes the township to seek the, to seek the services of a qualified entity to operate and maintain the Springfield Community Pool, including related recreational facilities and programs, to the issuance of an RFP via the competitive contract provisions of the local public contracts law. I'll make a motion uh, for adopt resolution 2021-281. I second. And uh, Mr. John, you want to explain some of this? Like or? Mr. Dowd would like to oh. explain okay. why we had to do this. Yeah. So uh, the on the heels of the closure of the pool season for this year, um, you know, uh, which was a success based on based on my understandings and the presentations yes. that were given. Um, the administrator had asked me to look into what our you know, what our options are for trying to have a similar arrangement um, in the future uh, to have uh, pool the pool operated by another entity. Uh, so we looked into it um, a little bit more deeply, and also we supplemented some of our prior research with um, more recent guidance from the state of New Jersey 
uh, on uh, uh, procurements. And we determined that in order to, to do this and to maintain flexibility that, that's needed to make sure that it's done the right way, um, that a, a procurement had to be, a formal procurement had to be done. Um, and it had, we had two options. The, the township had two options. One is to go out to, in essence, go out to bid for services of this type, in which case um, we, the town would, be, uh, would have to uh, base its determination on the lowest cost or the lowest price, depending on how you on how you define it. Um, but another option, an exception, which gives the town a little bit more flexibility, um, is utilizing what's called the competitive contracting process. Um, and pool operation and maintenance services um, fall into one of those exceptions for um, under a, a recreational services um, sort of umbrella. And what that would do uh, for this body would give you the, the option of entering into or, well, seeking proposals for these services that were provided by the YMCA this, this past season um, for a multi-year uh, instead of just a single year uh, and allows you to consider things other than cost or price, um, which, which can be important, especially when you're, when you're talking about operating an existing um, utility, an existing um, resource of the township. So uh, it's our recommendation that the township utilize this, this what's in essence an RFP process um, to seek proposals uh, and hopefully there'll be um, uh, more than one. Um, hopefully there'll be um, proposals that are that, that meet all of the uh, sort of all the standards that I think were um, uh, created and um, and were met by the YMCA this past this past season. Um, and this would be this process. It's a little bit more formal than a typical RFP. It's similar to what we did with our revaluation services. Um, and that's why we're doing, that's why there's a resolution. A resolution is required to kickstart um, that type of program. But we have to put this out now because I don't want it to get behind. That's why we were doing it right away. I mean, that's why it's being done now and not in 2022. So, like, like next month, I guess you got to put out what your qualifications are, whatever, you know, whatever they are. The, the intent is to get an RFP uh, completed and on the street within the next couple weeks uh, so that sometime in January, uh, a contract award can be made. Right, I want to make sure. I don't yeah. want to that's that's the timeline. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And there's nothing to do with the services received or anything like that. Not at all. No, no this was guidance from our township attorney right. that we have to follow rules. This is so this he's is a rule follower and me not right. so much. <laughs> so okay. You know why I, I, I read an article um, <laughs> earlier that I didn't like the way it was written. Um, and I'll let that be for that, but um, not everything's exactly what you read on, on uh, the news sources or the internet, but this has nothing to do with the services that were received um, last year by the summit. Why? Uh, we were very happy with, with what they gave us. And uh, this is just a formality. That we, th this is just the procedure we have to go through. This is the procedure that we have to go through, and, and the recommendation for an RFP uh, process as opposed to a bidding process is to, so that this body can help ensure that you will receive the types of services that you received from the YMCA last year um, in years going forward. Excellent. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll do a roll call. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Min Capitis? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Okay. We'll move on to discussion and action items. Um, we have uh, Mayor's Council. Mayor's Council for Rawway River Watershed Flood Control. Would that be Mayor Kaiser? Um, there's, there's not much of an update, uh, but I did relay what we discussed last time and our desire as Springfield to see a, a, a shift in money from uh, a, the, the current makeup is about 90% spent on uh, uh, lobbying in Washington and about 10% uh, spent on engineering and studies. We have now decided as a group to shift that focus. Um, we have a follow-up meeting. We, we were originally going to meet during the League of Municipalities, but not everybody was down there. Not everybody's schedules uh, worked, so we are now meeting on December, I think, 2nd. And uh, so hopefully on the next one we'll have some more info on, on, on possibly what 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 money is available 
especially coming out of the last infrastructure spending bill. And uh, we'll continue to update monthly. Okay. I want to discuss approval of a donation of a $50 program trip credit for Springfield Recreation Department, Springfield Senior Senior Citizen Club as a basket prize at their annual holiday luncheon. This has been donate, uh, done annually, but is now a program credit rather than a pool membership. We've done it for as long as I've been here. Mm -hmm. All right. I second. Okay. Uh, Committee Manuber? Yeah. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yep. Committee Min Capities? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Okay. And we have correspondence. We have JCPNL notice of public hearing. Verify petition to establish a new rate component. Cost incurred pursuant to mandated community solar program December 7th, 430 and 530. The phone number for that is 1-800-258. 2080. Then we have a JCPNL notice of public hearing, verified petition, approval of JCPNL electric vehicle program, December 7th, also 430 and 530. 1 800 258 2080. Finally, we have Cranford has an ordinance 2021 17, amend code chapter 255. Land development pertaining to elevation of buildings in the floodplain overlay district. And that's it. So now we are going to go back to public comment on any governmental issue. Where, where, is, this, no, where is this thing happening, JCPNL? Where's the public hearing? Uh, uh, over the phone. Phone. Oh, phone. phone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comment, any governmental issue at all 973-232-4442 973-232-4442 you know going back to jcpnl i'm getting i get emails every day from jcpnl about solar and calls and all that i mean is it legit i don't i'm, I'm afraid to give out my number anything yeah it's legit is it's it? it's Solar is something that oh, it's coming. It's coming, yes, but we just need to put the process, procedure, and infrastructure in place in order to do it. But the problem here is when the county offered solar panels ten years ago, and they were going to put them on a on the building. Yeah. But the infrastructure wasn't there. Correct. Are they fixing the infrastructure? I don't know. Uh, I, that's I, I well. I think that was the push from last year from the conversations that I had on those conference calls when we had the storm, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that was it. Like, the infrastructure is so bad that they're not willing to make the investment to fix it. And that's part of the reason I think a couple years before, when we tried to change from JCPNL to another public service, no one else would take it because the initial investment you'd have to make to improve the infrastructure was too much of a cost for any other public service to bear. I mean, they've done better. Yeah. We have done yeah. better right now. I mean, I'll admit that. With that, there is no public comment. Meeting to uh, the I, motion I just to want to say something real quick, if I could. First and foremost, I just want to wish everybody a very, very happy Thanksgiving. When I think of the things that I'm thankful for, um, I, I appreciate certainly, you know, in addition to my family, the, the people that I get to work up here uh, every day. Um, you know, it's so funny. Everybody says, oh, it's one party up here. We always agree. We always march and have marching orders. That's and, not and it's true. not true. And, but I am grateful, even the times that we do disagree, and not everybody sees it all the time, but the times that we do disagree, I, I still enjoy the hell out of working with these oh, yeah. members up here every single day. Hey, I'm right. thankful. Listen, I'm thankful for all of you. You know, but by my calculations, we actually had, I'm going to tell you, we had a, you don't know this outside, but, we had a blowout two years, two hours ago, and you know what? Listen, thank you. I still don't like you. I don't, I don't like you. Either. <laughs> thank you. Everybody voices their own opinion. Thank you. And you know what? You, you, you're not going to always agree, but you'll figure out a way to work together yeah. for to get what we have to get done for the town. So, with that, motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Happy Turkey Day. Ooh, oh.